Okay, I'm going to bring to order the, the, the sexual offenders meeting of the Green Sexual Offenders Residency Board uh, for November 14th. Um, I'm going to start off just uh, with roll call. Uh, myself, Renee, Kathy, Heidi, and Ed Dorf as uh, alternative for Melissa. Uh, first thing to do is uh, approval of the agenda for this meeting. Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, second item uh, is approval of our minutes from our October 10th meeting. Uh, could I have a motion to approve uh, those minutes? Make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that. to our first uh, appeal, which is uh, Tammy Bone Files. And this is going to be on a phone call. Yes, this is uh, Dean uh, Gerondale with the Green Bay Sexual Offenders Residency Board. I'm looking for Tammy Bonfess. Oh, okay. I'll to you short. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Tammy, this is uh, Dean uh, Gerondale with the Green Bay, Green Bay uh, uh, Sexual Offenders Residency Board. Uh, we are here to hear your appeal today. Okay. Uh, looking to move uh, to 1745 11th Avenue in Green Bay, correct? Correct. All right. Just want to let you know you are in a public uh, meeting at this time. So as we go over your case, just want to make sure you refer to um, the persons involved as, as the victims and not list by personal name or affiliation. Okay. And second of all, if we do want to talk about um, your treatment programs, you do have the right to have that done in a private session or a public session, which would you prefer? Um, what is that concerning? So in other words, if, if you've gone through any treatment programs uh, since you've been incarcerated for the crime, um, you know, uh, or counseling, you have the right to do that in a private session, in which we'd clear the room and go into a, a private session that wouldn't be on our minutes, uh, versus a public session where everybody can hear it. No, that's fine. You can do whatever public is. All right, thank you. Okay, um, so I'd first like to start off with, uh, tell us a little, bu little bit about your crime and, and uh, what you were doing and, and how you, you got caught doing it. Okay, um, to begin with, is I had got charged with human trafficking of a child. Um, the way things have happened was, I was dating a gentleman um, who had brought over a female friend that his friend was dating, and they were temporary dating. They were staying for quite a while, and then she had brought to my attention uh, that she advertised herself on that page or whatever for purposes of making her ends meet. Uh, then from there, I was trying to assist her into getting away from what she was doing. Um, and then there was an event where she had asked me to translate some things so I could speak Spanish. Uh, go get visa, 
So are, are you are you saying that you you were um, uh, like a sar a sidebar person to her um, in in uh, in selling herself for sex, or were you actually uh, involved in in setting you know appointments for her and things like that? No, I did not set any appointments for her. Um, what had occurred, like I said, the only thing that had happened was is I translated what she had asked me to in Spanish for her. Okay. Uh, I never took anything from the victim. Maybe it's a bad, I, like I said, it was just a bad judgment, but knowing now what I didn't know back then, uh, I should have went ahead and contacted somebody to get her help the right way. And I didn't. I was trying to help her, which I thought was helping her on my own. Okay. Does anybody have any more questions on her <coughs> understanding of what the crime she committed? No. So, in regards to the, the facts of this <coughs> case, um, do you uh, do you believe she's telling the truth in terms of what uh, she was convicted with? According to the criminal complaint, um, she did help facilitate meetings and threaten some of the underage girls to participate. That she did? More she than did. one girl? Yes. Okay, so so we have an officer here that has has reviewed the, the case file, and, and he's indicating that you you are more complicit in not only the act of, of this one girl but with several others, and you're saying that that's not the case. I didn't, I didn't even get in the topic of the other girls. I was just talking about the girl that was living with me at the time. Okay. What did you do for the other girls then? So, so my, my question is, is that if that's the case, then why did you plead guilty to, you know, to keeping a place of prostitution?
right? Understand. Okay, uh, any other questions relating to her, her mm -hmm. crime? No. Okay. Um, just real, real briefly, um, in regards to the, the time you, you spent incarcerated, it looks like you, you haven't had any chance or you didn't uh, apply for any uh, sexual offender treatment, is that correct? They had ordered it to me here. Um, they never stated that it was mandatory. Okay. Um, so being here, I think it was an SO2 program. Um, <clears throat> and when they evaluated me, they, was, they went up based on certain things. It, it was really confusing as far as to my understanding. But with my uh, type of crime and the things, I had felt that if I would have taken the class here and went into that with other people that had done, you know, this different type of, you know, crimes or in more detail, that that would probably hurt me even more. Okay. I'm hearing, you know, someone actually physically doing something, you know what I mean, to a child or to someone, to anyone. I mean, I think some point a year, other words, you know, I try other things. Well, I've been here to better myself. I'm also now on um, psych medication too as well. Okay. So, um, who are you intending to, to live with? That's my mother, the address I provided to you. Okay, is, is your mom have anybody else besides, that live with you besides your mother? Um, my three girls will be there and her boyfriend. Your, your mom's boyfriend? Yes. And your three girls? Correct. Okay, and how old are your girls? I have a daughter who's 17. Uh, another one who's 14. And then my youngest who is 9. And I do have a son, but he is relying on his father. Okay. So when you uh, when are you scheduled to, to be released? Um, January 22nd of 2019. Okay. Um, any thoughts about when you get out what you want to do? Does anybody else have any more questions for her? No. Anybody? Okay. Um, is there anybody that wants to speak uh, for, uh, for her or against her in this location? Okay. Uh, looks like no one wants to speak either for or against you, ma'am. <coughs> so. I'd like to know too that. Um, Go ahead. your mother was not able to come and speak on your behalf today? My mother is working. And she's not able to get off for a couple hours? Uh, no, and she has to pick up my youngest daughter around this time as well. Okay. Right. Okay, does anybody want to make a motion in regards to Ms. Uh, Ms. Bonfis uh, residing at uh, 1745 11th Avenue? <coughs> I'll make a motion to deny Miss Boniface to 1745 11th Avenue. All right, is there a second? I'll second that. All right, is there any discussion? Anybody wants to <coughs> wants to give either for or against this motion before we vote? Okay, go ahead and, and, and start the vote process, please.
Motion to deny passes three to two. Okay, um, Ms. Bonfus, uh, you've been denied to move to 1745 11th Avenue in, in Green Bay. Um, at this particular time, you do have the right to come back <coughs> to this, this board at some time in the future um, in, in terms of a different address or this one, depending on if your circumstances have changed. So I just want to let you know. All right? I have, I have a question. Before you guys go. Go ahead. That is my only address I have to go to. So, <coughs> so at, at that particular point, you're going to have to work out with your uh, parole officer in regards to what other potential options you do have. Um, so I can't tell you what you can or cannot do. It's really up to your parole officer, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Our next person on our docket is uh, Mr. Thomas. Sir, why don't you come on up? Pardon me? Why don't you come on up? Holtz. Sure. Mr. Richard Thomas? Sure. Okay. Come on up. <coughs> okay, Mr. Thomas, you're looking to move to 1655 West Mason Street, is that correct? That's yes, correct. Yes. All right. And you're currently living at 1301 South Military? Mm hmm. All right. Uh, Today, we're again, we're going to go over your uh, particular crime. Uh, we ask that you just refer to the person as the victim as we talk about it. Yeah. Right? And uh, again, you have the right, uh, if you want to talk about your treatment programs, if you want to do that in public or private, which would you prefer? So again, if we want to talk about any treatment programs cool. you've had, you have the right to do that either in a private session or in, in a public setting. Well, public is fine. Public is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so it looks like um, back in 2016, if I'm reading this correctly, that uh, you had uh, an issue with a victim at age 16 and 17. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Tell us about what, what happened and, and what you did and how it, it come, came about that uh, you were convicted of this crime. Well, what it involved was indecent uh, exposure on my part. Okay. It was outside the window of my, if I was in the building and where I was living, it was in, in the window and it was about 6.30 in the morning and it was still not really light out, it was still partially dark. And this person walked by on the road and uh, that person reported it. Okay. That it, that it, it seen me. All right. Okay. And it, was it your intent to expose yourself in front of that person? Not particularly in front of that. I mean, I just, it was something that I did that was wrong, but the, I don't know who the person, at that time, I, I had no idea who the person was. Even now, I don't know. I mean, I could not identify that person by name or anything. Okay. okay. So it was sort of anonymous in that respect. You know? Okay. Um, so again, it looks like in 1993 you were convicted again uh, in regards to, again, exposing yourself. Is that correct? Back in 1993. Yeah, that, well, that was about that was about 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So, um, in regards to what you're doing, do you, do you know why you're doing that, or what, what's your driving motivate motivation on that? Why why are you exposing yourself to people? Well, that only happened, I say, man, that long, 25 years ago, and now it never happened otherwise. Um, but those are the times you were convicted. Have you, did you do it at any other time, standing in front of the window, exposing yourself? No. So why did you do it this last time? Well, sometimes it's hard to verbalize these things. It was just part of my, um, I don't know, how, how should I even put it? Uh, part of my urges and impulses that come from, you might say, is my... Uh, a uh, therapist indicated to me part of simply the, when we went over the entire, um, my whole sexual history in the sense of the feelings and emotions that I had had at the, you know, during my life that I never acted inappropriately at other times. Mm -hmm. But somehow uh, this was, is a result of that. 
and that's what I'm making amends for now. And, and in a sense, I feel like I'm going to be making amends, you know, the rest of my life, as as regards to what I did that was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I'm <laughs> you have my age. There. I'm an old person, you know. I'm 81 years old now, you know. And why some of this would have come about even later in my life, it's just hard for me to try to try to. Um, I say, to, as I said before, to verbalize all this, but it all had to do with my sexual history that is part of my entire life. But, but I never acted out uh, in, at any other time with regard to um, these, and that's what I've been working on with my therapist now, you know, for, I was in therapy now for over two years. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I believe what I submitted to the board previous to this meeting was a report from him. And then uh, as recently as yesterday, um, he did have a follow-up for me that uh, in a sense, in essence is saying that I continue to make progress via the treatment uh, process that I'm now, uh, um, uh, I now act in what he calls aftercare. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I said this follows about. No, he said he was okay with public session. Yep, go ahead. About two and a half years of treatment with my therapist, and now after that length of time, um, I'm now in what he calls aftercare. So I still meet with him. So that it, How it, often it's. Do you meet with him? Well, now I'm seeing him once a month. Okay. But. Uh, this is a continuation of the treatment program, is what he now calls aftercare. Right. Now, are you going to be living with anybody? No. Okay. And why are you looking to move to this particular location? Why am I? Why do you want to move to this location? Well, as I also uh, submitted to you in, in, in my, uh, in what I submitted to the board previous to today, is um, this uh, person there uh, is willing to rent to me. Uh, he's fully aware of my situation. He knows everything about it that I've indicated to him. And he did indicate by signing his name and the right. address that he would he's willing to rent to me. But I mean right right now at thirteen oh one Military Street is, is what what it what is that location? Is oh that that's the Bay Motel. The Bay Motel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you've been living there for almost two years? Uh no, I've been living there most of this year. Okay. Uh, so where are you living prior to that? Well, I had been over at a place called Extended Stay, which is by the airport. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I had asked actually for uh, pre, uh, through, well, let me see, through most of 17, I lived with a, um, with a classmate of mine up and he, he just lives out of Oconto. Okay. And I had lived with him. Uh, I say for about six months, and that would have been in 2017. All right. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, in 2017. Okay. So, just in regards to his particular crime, is is that accurate in terms of what his, his account was? Well, the criminal complaint states it occurred uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, five days in March. Um, uh, the same victim. Was, he was exposing himself to the same victim, and, and the later dates he uh, attempted to uh, get the attention of the victim by yelling "Hey!" and shining a light, possibly a flashlight, out the window to get his attention. Okay. All right. Do you, do you believe that is accurate? Did you do that? I don't ever recall anything about yelling. I don't know, you know, that I can remember the yelling part. That I, or calling or saying anything that I don't remember at all, because my um, my uh, my probation officer had asked me about that too, and I said I don't recall any anything that I called out or yelled or anything like that. That part I don't remember that. Well, you originally told us that this happened once, and he said it was five times in March. So which one is correct? Well, I was only charged twice. Okay, so how many times have you done this before not being charged? 
or caught? Well, I mean, that's in, in my in my case, I was charged by the district attorney's office for two counts. We we, we understand yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. So the, the question we're asking you is, you know, you're charged with two different counts of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the record shows that you exposed yourself on five different days. Is that accurate? I was never. I never had anybody's attention during during those other times that I might have stood in the window. Okay, but you, you did st stay st stood in the window more than two times. Yeah. Okay. Do you know how many times you did, or don't you know? How many times? How many times you stood in the window? No, I don't recall exactly. No. Okay. So, was it a daily thing? Is that something you did every day? No. <clears throat> I have another question. Um, when you're describing how your victims were affected, the first one you say may have been startled or afraid, and the second one you say he he wasn't offended, he didn't appear to be. How do you? Why is there a difference? You mean the the victim? The victims. You wrote down on the paper how it, how did this affect your victim? How did they feel about what you did? Yeah. And so the first one you said was startled or afraid. Well, I th that's, that, would, that would have been my feeling that he was maybe But you startled. didn't think your first victim was startled or afraid? My first victim. Yeah, the one in 93. You write, you, I did not believe yeah. the person was offended. He did not appear to be. Yeah, well, that was an adult. And, uh, yeah, and he didn't appear to be offended. Could you talk about that offense? Because you didn't really say what happened. You just said that was 25 years ago. Yeah. Was it standing in the window again? No. Was, okay, could you talk about that one, please? Well, that was at a wayside at night <clears throat> where I was. And I exposed myself to this person. And he, he didn't appear to, I mean, he didn't see it was an adult. He didn't seem to me to be offended by that or anything as much as, you know, what I can remember, you know, he did. So it, that's, but that, but that was, I say, 25 years ago. When right. I was, Do you know why you did that at that time? Well, I, mean, I guess it was, outside? I guess it was just part of my um, feeling about myself and uh, that somehow I had this uh, urge to act out in some way, but, uh, um, Nothing ever happened from that time until um, this thing of two years ago and all. So. Okay. All right. Any more questions relating to the, the crime itself? Um, did, you, <coughs> did you have any? Uh, I guess maybe the, you had made you had made. Uh, copies of what I sent to you on yep. the treatment with the board we members. Have us. You've seen that and I said I had an addendum just as of yesterday. Um, from, I don't yes. have that addendum. If you want to show it to me, I'll take that. Oh, yeah. Well, this first page is, is goes back to the original and then he has um, well, there's really three addenda on there. The most recent one, there was one, two others previous to the one of yesterday. Can you just tell me what some of your triggers would be you, that you have to address in your prevention plant? Like what, it says here you, um, you're aware of healthy legal boundaries, limits, and related triggers to a relapse prevention plan. So do you, do you have any feelings that you, would make you think you need to do this? Well, I, not anymore. I mean, I, mm -hmm. there were times when I felt there were certain things that activated my urges or compulsion, you know. But um, I don't, uh, but through my treatment process, um, I've gotten to the point where I don't, I'm not conscious of anything now at this point in my life where um, uh, there are any things that I, I feel are going to uh, compel me or, or have an urge to act out. Okay. I think uh, the treatment has helped to change all of that, you know, and uh, that's what 
amongst everything in these past two and a half years uh, that I've been working on with my therapist. Uh, um, you know, these are all the things that we've addressed. And uh, I feel my thinking and my whole state of mind has changed with regard to all of this. How often do you go to treatment? Now, mm -hmm. I see my therapist every month. This is an aftercare, after two and a half years of, of treatment where I saw him. Initially, I was um, uh, seeing him every week. And then eventually he said, no, I think we can go to every two weeks. And that's what we did, and then, and all of this. But even, see, my treatment took place, started even during the time that I was incarcerated. And I was at, I was at the Huber Center here. And I was allowed to go down to, uh, to leave there and go down for my treatments with my therapist even um, during the time that I was incarcerated too. Right. They allowed me to do that. So what are you doing with your days? My days? Yeah, what are you doing? Well, I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of visiting with my friends and those that, uh, that are, have stood by me and everything with all of this. And, um, and um, I watch a lot of TV, particularly the news. I'm kind of a news person. Um, <coughs> other good programs on, on TV that are on channels like Oh, Hallmark and uh, History and and uh, National Geographic and those. But I watch a lot of TV that regularly with regard to news, the Science Channel. I say plus I do a lot of reading and and so my days are that I, I keep myself occupied and you know in that way and, and busy okay. with everything that I do you know and everything and all of that, all of this through all my treatment that my you know my therapist knows all about this and and uh, he encourages me. And he always asked me, "What are how are your days going? What are you doing now?" And everything, and and um, I think he's been uh, very affirming of me with regard to what I've been trying to do now to keep myself occupied and uh, you know and busy and everything with things you know too. Okay. So I believe that I believe really that my life has changed quite a bit since all of this occurred, you know. And um, like I said, I don't have the urges and the compulsions that I feel I had before in spite of, I'm sorry I forgot to turn this off. No um, that I somehow feel that I've, I've uh, changed with regard to all the things that probably were triggers for me in the past that might, you know, like I would feel like all the times that times that uh, I never acted on a lot of things, but there was a time when my therapist would say to me, well, do you, have you felt in the past sometimes that you were like, you were out of control with regard to some of these things? And I said, I suppose I would have to say yes, that I were times, uh, he said, how do you feel now about all of those things? I said, well, I think I've had quite a turnaround in my life where a lot of these things, you might say are not, I don't believe are an issue for me anymore with regard to acting out inappropriately because of all of the treatment I've had. And I would say at times my treatment was pretty intense, you know, it, it was, uh, but uh, I realized it was all for my good and all for my benefit. And he mentioned somewhere in, even in my original uh, report from him that I, he said that I, he felt that I had worked hard with regard to my treatment that I've taken it uh, seriously, you know, and that uh, all for me to continue, but I said I don't want to keep, you know, like <coughs> repeating myself to you, but that I've continued and I feel I will be making amends the rest of my life. Okay. And, uh, and I would also say too, it isn't just that I've made all this progress that he feels I've made simply because of the legal consequences. It's also with regard to I don't want to be the person I was before. And this all this treatment has helped me to be, I'm not a different person, but I'm, there's something about me that's different. In a way, a lot different. And it, like I say, it isn't just the, the legal issues. It's me with regard to wanting to be a better person, uh, spiritually and emotionally and 
all of this year <coughs> too, because I'm getting along in my life, you know, and uh, I've been in reasonably good health, but yet, at my age, I'm 81 now, I don't know how much longer uh, I might be in this world. I, I don't, you know, I, right. it's just, all of those things are the things that I continue to, re to reflect upon. And, um, you know, there isn't a day that goes by since all of this happened <clears throat> that it doesn't come to my mind. Now, I don't know if that seems unusual or I kind of think that it helps me to realize what I did and that I'm remorseful for and that I'm sorry for and everything and maybe the fact that it's, even though I mean it's not something that preoccupies me all through the day or anything like that but it's something that in some way I, th I think it just enters my mind even if so very briefly maybe I don't know if I would say every day but very frequently you know and I think that's been all to my benefit too because it helps me to reflect on what this is all about and what happened to me and that uh, this is not going to happen anymore. Okay. And my, my therapist has said, you know, he said, I really believe now, he said, you are, you are not a danger and you are not a threat to anybody. Okay. Appreciate that's, it. That's, that's what he said. So. Okay. Um, all right. Does anybody have any more direct questions for I, him? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, you're still on probation, correct? I will be on probation. It's less than a year now. That you have to go? Yeah, my my probation will end in October of next year. Okay. Since you've been on probation, have you gone to jail for any rule of violations? There was only one one instance where it was, uh, how should I put it? I picked up someone to take uh, him and his daughter because he couldn't drive, and he had been his his uh, probation had been revoked or something because of a of an offense that he had, and so I uh, should not have done this. Uh, Did you know his probation had been revoked when he took him? No. Okay. But uh, it had been, and um, as a result of that. Uh, I was put on a probation hold um, and I was in jail then for two days and then my probation agent had me released and he simply wrote this off as a minor violation. Okay. He said, you might have had the right intention, he said, but your judgment was wrong. I said, well, I admit that and, and uh, I, I guess I said that was, I, I certainly never intended to knowingly or consciously um, violate my probation because I've always taken my probation very seriously and have never had any other issues with regard to uh, my probation. Okay. And my Is that accurate too? He's only had one instance as far as you know? About a year ago, October. Yeah. Okay. And, my, and my PO gives me a good report and, and he wrote this off as a, as a minor violation. He didn't uh, you know, that's, that's the way he put it, you know. Okay. Um, is there anybody else here that would like to speak either for or against this gentleman? Yes, there is. There's, uh, oh, yeah, there's, is there anybody? Yeah, yeah I would. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, uh, and, sir, why don't you come on up? If you can, and just, again, just uh, make sure we have your name as a record. Yeah, you do. Donald Coon. Okay, go ahead, sir. Um, I've known him for 25 years wouldn't be a deacon in the Catholic Church if it wasn't for him. When my mother died, he was there for me. He's been a part of our son. I can't say a bad word about him. He's been really, really good to us. So why do you think he did what he did? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it was something that happened to him at home or, or what. I don't know. Okay. But he's done, never done nothing in all the years I've known him anything right that wasn't good and wasn't positive do you think he's at risk for doing this again no why i think he's a changed man even when you talk to him on the phone now i think he's more positive i think he's more
caring. I think he's more, he's just totally different. It almost seems like it's lifted and it's gone. Okay. I think he's, the burden he's had probably all his life is he's so changed. He's just a totally different guy. All right, thank you for your time. Yep. Sir, why don't you come on up? Does have your name? Yeah, uh, Steve Becker. Okay, Steve. My wife Sue and I and our family have known him for about 20 years. Um, we consider him a friend. Um, when this instance happened about two years ago, <coughs> we basically, he came over to our house. Um, we do have, we host international students and we are minors, so we made it very clear that uh, if at all our, our students were offended or objected to having Father come over for visit, we would not, we would have ceased it right there and we would have maybe kept our relationship outside of our home. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that uh, at this point in his life, and he, like, I think Deacon Donner uh, has said that he's changed. Um, I don't know, we didn't know the history beforehand uh, with the first offense. But the second offense, we basically sat down with Richard and said, okay, as long as you continue on your meds and you keep, you know, you see your therapist, we will support you. And okay. I feel at this stage of the game that he needs to get a place of his own and move to this uh, different residence would think help a lot. No longer. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, is there anybody else? Go ahead, come on up, yeah. I'm Sue Becker. I'm Suzette, actually. I go on there. Um, I just want to mention that when we met Richard, uh, we have um, two boys, and they were pretty young at the time. And there has never been anything that went on with our boys and, and him. You know, th this came as a shock. And But I do remember him saying uh, when he talked to us after afterwards, that he had been feeling uh, depressed at that time, and this all just, you know, took over. And so that's why we did say to him, as long as you stay on your meds and um, therapy and stuff, you know, this would be a good thing. Okay. All right, thank you. Oh, I, I, I should mention that I've suffered a lot of anxiety and a lot of uh, depression through all of this, and I still have those feelings. But um, but my doctor has, my doctor knows my whole situation, and he has me on uh, on an antidepressant right now to help me cope and deal with all of this, you know, too. So I should have, I should have mentioned that. That's the only meds that I take with regard. To my my other meds are just regular meds that I that are that are prescribed for me, you know. Okay. Take. All right. Uh, unless somebody has any more questions from them, does anybody want to make a motion? I'm going to make a motion to deny Mr. Thomas to 1655 West Mason Street, Green Bay. Is there a second? I'll go ahead and second that motion. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, and unless anybody wants to speak, we're going to go ahead and take that vote. Go ahead. Okay, uh, so that motion failed to deny to that particular location. Um, is there anybody else anybody just wants to say or make another motion, or else we're going to go ahead and and, uh, uh, and move on without a, without a decision? Anybody Doesn't that mean he gets to live there? No. Basically, the, yeah, I said we have a right to make another motion. If someone oh. wants to make another motion, I'll make a motion to approve Mr. Thomas to 1655 Mason. West West Mason. Mason. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, we're going to go ahead to, uh, we have two motions to approve to that location, 1655 West Mason Street. Motion to approve 
fails three to two. Okay. Um, I don't know what happened there, the sir. So, you know, I just want to make sure. Um, does everybody understand the way they voted <coughs> in regards to both the first and the second? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Because both motions failed, obviously one person changed their their vote in regards to first denying you, and then when we asked to approve you, someone three out of the the, the people <coughs> said no as well. So. At this particular point, unless no one plans to change their vote, then you've been denied access to this particular location. So um, does anybody wish to change their vote to the way the last vote was taken or not? Can I make a comment? Sure, go ahead. <coughs> I've been on this for a while, <coughs> and I don't think I've seen anybody come in with the amount of treatment that you have done. I mean, that's a lot of dedication, two and a half years. A lot of people are only in there for less than a year. And for me, that was a huge factor. And for you to still continue to go when this incident happened two and a half years ago, um, and that, that's, for me, that's a very important feature. So okay. that's why I voted for you to be able to stay there. Right. Okay, so here's your alternatives at this particular point. Okay, you've been denied to, to move into this particular location. Doesn't mean you can't come in front of the board again at a different location or at a different time to reapply to, to move into a different location, but for right now you've been not approved to move to 1655 West Mason Street. Okay? Is there some reason with regard to the location or is it? Again, I, I asked for comments from the board and, and you only had one particular comment in terms of positiveness for you. The board doesn't have to comment on their vote, and obviously they, no one wants to at this particular time. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, all I can say is that I think this is a terrible uh, injustice to me. I've tried for how many years now to try to find a place to live. Mm -hmm. No one would accept me, and the person who was agreeable was on an approved, was on a, a list that my probation agent gave me. Yep. And so, I have no, the Beckers here consider me a part of their family. Where am I supposed to go now? I have no place to go. I can't continue to stay there because of the cost. Mm -hmm. You know, only I can tell you, sir, is, is, is that, you know, I didn't put you in front of, in this position. You put yourself in this position by, by your crime, okay? You know, you're going to have to look for other places either outside the city of Green Bay to live that, that's willing to rent with you, whether it's in Schwabenon, Howard, De Pere, or someplace within within Brown County or where your or parole officer will let you do that, that's going to be accepting of you. But at this particular time, the city of Green Bay is not going to let you live at this particular location. No. So. Well, I consider this, well, you know, I consider this a punishment. Well, and I don't think the pun I can all say that I don't think the, pun the punishment fits the crime. Well, you're. you're I'm you're, not saying this yeah. wasn't. This didn't happen, and it wasn't that it wasn't wrong. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but all I'm doing that I have been doing all this time is something positive. I, I, I you know, I, I I'm not going to comment on it. No, I but I can tell. I can understand your feelings, but again, I, I didn't put you in that chair. You know, so we're trying to. This is a citizen board made up of individuals that don't get paid by the city. We're just members of, of the town, and we're trying to make the best decisions we possibly can. So again, it doesn't preclude you from the right to come back to us with a different location, but you can't live at 1655 West Mason at this yeah. time. All right? Okay, thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Leo Sanchez. <coughs> Mr. Basuto? Yeah. Oh, come on up, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Basuto, you're looking to move to 154 Burger Street, is that correct? Yes. Can you print me at the 1761 Shawnee Avenue, which is the TLP, correct? I was previously, but I am now officially recognized as homeless. Okay. All right. 
Okay, so again, we're going to kind of start with uh, your initial crime. I want you to talk about the, the victim, not referring to him by a personal name or affiliation. Um, and then afterwards, uh, if we want to address um, some of your treatment programs, you have the right to do it in a public session or private session, which would you prefer? Public is okay. Public is fine. Okay, good. So why don't you tell us a little bit um, uh, about what happened. It looks like you had first degree sexual assault of a three-year-old. Uh, tell us what, what happened. Yeah, um, essentially I was babysitting my brother's kid because he wanted to go out and have drinks at the bar. Okay. And um, initially I was averse to the idea I was going to go out myself that night and hang out with my friends, but he then offered me a bottle of liquor to watch his kids. And, and you were how old at the time? 19. Okay. And then... Um, 19 or 20, one two. Okay. And then um, I said yes, and then we started drinking, him and I, and then eventually he left, and he said he would be back within the hour, because that's when the UFC fight he wanted to watch would be over about. And so he laid the kids down to sleep, and I was sitting there watching a movie until he came back. But one of the kids woke up, and... She wouldn't go back to sleep, so I put her on the couch with some blankets and pillows, put a movie on, said, you know, watch the movie till you fall asleep. She got up to grab some juice, and I kicked my feet up on the couch to notice that it was wet. And then I asked her if she peed. She said no, but there was no water or anything to spill, so I asked her again. She said yes, and I said, okay, well, go clean yourself up, to which she went into the bathroom and turned on the bathtub faucet. And I heard this, I was still watching the movie. I thought she would just get changed or like just wipe herself off. I don't know. And then I heard the bathtub faucet on and I was concerned because I wasn't sure whether or not she knew how to take herself a bath or anything like that. So I walked in there to make sure she was doing okay. And I see her just cupping the water from the bathtub faucet and just throwing it at her face. And I found this to be humorous. So I pulled out my phone and recorded a video of it so I could show her parents when they got back. Okay, after this had happened, she cleans up, I help her clean up because she's not cleaning up correctly, and then I help her get dressed, and after that, her parents didn't end up coming home until like 3 a.m., really late. Okay. Yeah, and then um, I forgot to show them the video because I was really drunk by the time they actually got home. <coughs> I, st I started drinking again in anticipation that they would be back already, and they didn't get back. But um, when they did get back, they got into an argument and a fight, and he pushed her, I guess, on his way to leaving because she did not want to let him leave, and he was trying to leave. And then um, she came and woke me up because I was asleep, and she asked to use my phone to get a hold of somebody, and I disabled my lock, and I gave it to her, you know. And then she went through my phone and she found a video, of course, concerning, and she called the cops on me. And I forgot to show them the video. I was, I was as soon as they got home, I passed out. Okay. And that is why I went to prison. Okay, how much time were you incarcerated for? Three years. Okay. And did you plead guilty? Yes. Okay. Um, is that the facts of the case? Oh, yeah, according to the complaint. Bathed the child three years old. The video, the, the, the bathing of the child, um, but also the video showing them uh, uh, touching her in the vagina area. Um, it seemed to focus on the buttocks and the genital area of the child. Okay. Um, is that your recollection as well or not? I don't exactly recollect where I was aiming the camera. I do remember doing that though. Okay. All right. Um, does anybody else have any more questions regarding the, the crime? You remember touching her. Would, you, would you remember? I remember helping her clean up because she wasn't doing it correctly. Okay. Okay. And, and when were you released? I was released July seventeenth of this year. Okay. All right. And you're currently in SOT train. I was, but then I had my hours changed at work. And I was told I could get put into the PM classes, so I'm on the waiting list for that. 
Okay, so how many sessions did you attend prior to having to move to the new new time setting? A little over a month, so like five around there. Okay. Four or five. Can you tell me what you learned during those five sessions? Well, yeah, of course I learned accountability for your actions and you had to learn to stay out of mind traps and cycles that'll get you doing what you are not supposed to be doing. And it's pretty, it's pretty much been just that, like staying away from dangerous thinking and learning to make better choices and keeping yourself busy. All right. Um, who are you be living with? My mother. Okay. You currently have, what job do you have currently have right now? I was just at American Foods. Okay, what happened there? You're not there anymore? Yeah, no, they have a point system, so if you miss so many times or you're late, they fire you, and I had the stomach flu, so they had to let me go, I, and I couldn't work, so. Okay, how long, did you, how long did you work there? I worked there for about a month and a half. Okay. And when did you, s when did this happen? Um, that you were let go? Two days ago. Yeah. How many days were you off with the stomach flu? Three. Well, I called in late one day, and then I went in, realized that was a terrible idea, called in the next two days, and still been out of points. Okay. okay. Um, any other questions for him? Any statements for us? Is your, is your question? Yeah. So where are you working now? Right now I am unemployed, but I am going to go to a temporary agency and get into the next job as fast as I can. Okay. Does anybody want to speak in, in your behalf? It's here. Yeah. Hey, Come on up, ma'am. Uh, did you register prior to or not? This? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. She did? Okay. Oh. You have it? So oh. I forgot the end. Okay, go ahead. Sure what What's your name? Amanda Sanchez. Okay, go ahead. Um, I feel, of course, this whole um, charge is absurd, but my brother, I, I, I think very highly of him. Um, I, he's my younger brother. I, myself, am a young mom. I have two children. Um, one of my children is 17, and growing up, you know, I watched all of the kids as my own um, and never questioned my kids around him, never, when, when he was charged with this, my oldest you know, I had to explain to her and ask her questions if she ever felt comfortable or whatnot. And she thought it was absurd that I was even asking her this. And I said yes, but right. I want to know. And, um, you know, I'm biased because I'm his sister, but I know that, you know, the, the charges in case are very severe. I would I understand they're in place for reasons. Um, but he, he's been out since July. He's, this is his second job. Um, his first job he was at probably, I, I don't know, like three months. Um, and, you know, I've seen him constantly continuing on even with the luck that he's had with the whole situation. Um, and I think that he's very young. He has his whole life ahead of him. And I, I want him to have a bright future. And I know he was at the wrong place, wrong people, wrong time. Um, and content's taken out of, you know, everything out of proportion. Um, but I, I don't know exactly, is this just for his address? This just for the address we're talking yeah. about here. So I guess the question is in terms of where he's going to be living. What what's the the whole life going to be like for him living with his mother? Um, I think that would be very helpful because um, right now he doesn't have a, a car. The last three months he saved, got a car. Um, car didn't. It's, it's not drivable. So he uh, that was the first day he got, he got it registered. So. Um, now the last month he's been working and now saving money for the same thing. He's been catching rides, um, skating, walking, whatever he can. Winter is coming around the corner, but I think my mom would be able to help him, you know, as well as getting back and forth, keep an eye on him, make sure he's staying on path, <coughs> staying positive. Um, I think that having the family support, he's missed three years of life, um, not life, but you know, outside mm -hmm. and. I don't think there's any concern with him. Um, they've checked with, you know, the apartment manager. They've, uh, you know, there's no kids in the area. We, I feel like he's. I would so, like to see him go does to does does school. his brother support him? The the, the the brother that that my brother, yes. our brother. Um, 
we stopped talking to him um, because of the situation. He's um, a meth addict. Him and his wife are split up. Um, and sh they would find babysitters on Craigslist. My mom let them move in with her at the time of the situation because they lived in Utah, then they lived in Idaho. They came back. He left initially because he used to steal from my mom for drug money. Um, my mom said, fine, come back, you, you know, you, you and your wife, your kids, stay with me, but you have two months, get your shit, stuff together, and, you know, get a place. Well, during that time, they were spending their money, drinking, partying, always needing sitters. Um, I didn't want to intervene. I always said I was busy because I didn't care for their lifestyle, and the wife, we just met her sure. at that time. So, as of right now, he still, he doesn't have any relationship with his brother? Uh, him? Yes. No. Okay. Uh, not that I know of. Okay. All right. I don't either. Okay. All right. That's what I needed to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any other questions for her? I do not. All right. All right. Is there anybody else that wants to speak to for or against him? Okay. Um, anything you'd like to tell us before we uh, ask for a motion? Yeah. Um, while I was incarcerated, I kept myself very busy and proactive. I, <coughs> as soon as I got to the prison, I was going to be at for my main time. I immediately filed um, to get put into any program and any treatments I did need. And then I also filed for college courses and a job. And I got all of those things except my treatment was waitlisted because there it was full. And I had to wait to get into it. So while I was on the waitlist, I completed um, customer service and customer service management through Microsoft Office and I got that certificate with presidential honors. I was a tutor the whole time I was there. I also was part of the grounds crew. Um, I did pretty much everything there was to do at that institution. I filed to leave to go to another institution to pursue more education, but that was denied because I was too young to move to another institution. So. I kind of got stonewalled there in terms of my goals and what I could accomplish. But now that I'm out, I have plenty of goals and plenty of things I would like to accomplish. One of which is securing my own place to live that's stable, and then getting a vehicle, and then just saving up money because I do want to go back to school, and I'd like to do that as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Does anybody want to make a motion in regards to Mr. Leo Sanchez Sanchez Batisto? Suto, sorry. Anybody want to make a motion? <coughs> I'm going to make a, a motion in regards to uh, Mr. Uh, Suto uh, to move to 154 Burger Street uh, for a period of 90 days, at which time he has to come back and let us know that he's uh, back into the treatment program. And um, and understand where he's at with that. I'll second that motion. All right, we do have a second, so let's go ahead and vote on that particular motion to approve you for 90 days uh, pending your return, uh, at which time you'd have to present that you're actually back in <coughs> class. Sure. <coughs> Motion passes four to one. Okay, uh, sir, you've been approved to move to 154 Burger Street for a period of 90 days. We will okay. send that notification there. Sure. Also, along with uh, the next, uh, after 90 days, you have to come back to us. You're going to have to okay. prove um, that you're back into a treatment program, mm -hmm. and that it would also bring any documentation that you have that you're either back in school to, or you got a new job, okay. or whatever sure. it would be to help support Most where definitely. you're at. Okay. Yeah. All right. I appreciate okay. your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Next up is Mr. Uh, Peyton Stewart. <coughs> okay, Mr. Stewart, you're looking to move to up here real quick. To 2713 Humboldt Road. Yeah. Okay. And you're currently homeless? Yes. Well, that's 2713 uh, Humboldt Road, number five. Yep. Okay. Where we have to, yep. Okay. Uh, again, we're going to talk about um, uh, your crime. Just make sure you refer to the person as a victim. 
Uh, and then in addition to that, if, if we want to talk about any of your treatment programs, you can either do that in either public or private session, which you prefer. Public. Okay. All right. Great. All right. So why don't you tell us what happened uh, in 2015 uh, with your victim? Well, I had many victims because I was just downloading hundreds of files at a time. Child pornography? Yeah. It, it went intermittent, intermittently. Um, sometimes I would go like two or three months without looking at it. Sometimes I'd look at it twice a week. And uh, I read, um, the program I used automatically uploaded it. So the sheriff's department downloaded it and then they got a warrant for to find out who, what IP address this belongs to. And then they arrested me. But um, I would download child porn and then masturbate and then feel really guilty and ashamed and I'd delete it all. Okay. So how long were you doing this before you got arrested? Since I was like 14. Okay. How old are you right now? 24. Okay. Um, how did, and from a standpoint, who are you planning to live with again? My father. Okay. And was this child pornography all ages? Yeah, it was, it was a, um, all ages, except I deleted the, like, younger stuff right away. But anything from anything year olds? Like, anything from, like, 10 and up. Okay. In regards to uh, your treatment programs, um, looks like you took S SOT training, is that correct? Yes. All right, why don't you tell us what, uh, what you learned through SOT training? Well, I learned the difference between being passive, assertive, and aggressive, and how to, how, how to be assertive, you know. I also learned coping mechanisms and what triggers are uh, my urge to look at porn, pretty much. Okay. So, how long were you in the program? I was in SO2 for 11 months, and I was in SO1 for like five, four or five months. Okay. And when did you complete the program? Looks like in in, sep in this year of seventeen. Hmm? When did you complete the, the last program? Just this year, correct? Yeah. Okay. I completed SO two in prison, and I completed SO one when I got out. Okay. And are you currently employed, sir? No. Okay. I'm disabled. Okay. What's your what's your disability, if I may ask? Um, paranoid schizophrenia, OCD, depression, anxiety, panic attacks. Okay. Are you on any medications for those? Yes. Okay. Do you believe that if you um, weren't taking your medication that you'd repeat this offense? No. Because, oh yeah, I'm going to tell you this. I still have nightmares about looking at child porn, like, it terrifies me in my sleep. I don't know. So you think, regardless of if you didn't stand your medication, that you, you wouldn't be looking at this stuff? Right. What, why do you think you're afraid of it now? <clears throat> Because I had a really bad experience when I got arrested, and I never want to go through that again. Okay. Anybody have any more questions in regards to the offense or his treatment programs? Um, I do. In your um, relax, relapse papers, you had to list five people that you could talk to did you talk to any of them 
you say you could talk to them about, there's nothing you couldn't talk to them about, and you could talk to them about everything. Mm -hmm. So did you ever talk to them about your downloading of child porn or anything like that? I talked to some of them about that. Not, not every one of the five people I listed, but I'm sure, I know my mom has read the thing, the, the Discovery, so she knows about it. My friend Tyler knows about it. Uh, my friend Krista knows about it. I probably should let everybody know the whole truth, though. <coughs> Well, I guess I was thinking back at the time when it, when it was going on. Oh, I I was completely isolated from the entire world during that time because I well I didn't know I was schizophrenic so but I'd go outside and I'd have a panic attack and paranoid thoughts and then I'd have to come back inside so and then I really didn't talk to anybody during that time. Okay, I read in the report too that you um, thought of killing people and eating them. Was this happening during this time, or when when was that going on? Oh, I was going on in prison when I was on bunch a bunch of meds. I was taking twenty one pills a day. In prison. In prison, yeah. So my thoughts weren't entirely. Rational. And how long have you been discharged? What do you mean? From from prison, how long have you been out? I've been out since January sixteenth. So nine eight, nine months here. Yeah. And where have you been living generally? I've been couch hopping between my friend Zach's, my friend Joe's, and my uncle uh, my uncle's place. So if you're if you're gonna live with your father, why why didn't you I guess why didn't this occur earlier? In terms of having, you know, this opportunity to live with your father? Um, my father doesn't have we just found a place that would let me live there. Okay. So the place he was living before wouldn't wouldn't allow you to live. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have any more questions for him? What kind of stuff do you do throughout the day? I read <coughs> nonfiction and I take notes. Um, sometimes I'll watch like a DVD. I talk to my friends a lot. I'm always talking to my friends now. Because like I realize that the most important thing in life is like friends, family and happiness. You know? So I I try and talk to all my friends. Like several times throughout the day, several yeah. times a week? I called uh, like three different friends a day. <clears throat> Just to chit chat. Okay. All right. Any more questions for him? Does anybody mm -hmm. want to speak either for or against him? Uh, sir, why don't you come on up? Your name, sir? Name is Roy D. Ryder. Here, go ahead, sir. And I'm a Circles of Support volunteer, and he's a participant. Okay. And he he comes and he participates. He's not there all the time, but he's there quite a bit of the time. Um, he's a very determined young man. That's what I get from him. Um, keeps going, you know, with his challenges and stuff like that. What does he do at Circle Support for you? Well, it's a, it's a sharing group. We come in right. and talk about your weekend and uh, try and uh, help them with uh, achieve their goals. And a lot of it actually comes from the other participants um, helping out. But, you know, we help them. So what do you think his goals are? Well, he wanted to have a job before he had disability. And he still wants to do some work if he can find something that's going to fit in with his disability. Um, so, but that hasn't worked out for him. Okay. Um, why do you think he's a, a good risk to, to live in the city of Green Bay? Because, like I say, he's a determined. I think he's determined not to 
make those mistakes again. You know, I just see a determination with him. Um, you know, he, he talks about his medications and everything, and there was times where they were changing his medications, and things were difficult for him. And he come and he expressed that, and how he wanted to, you know, he didn't feel comfortable with what the doctor was doing, but this was happening, that was happening, and he was work, working through it, you know. Um, you know, we kind of counseled him a little bit, as much as we can as volunteers. And he's, you know, he, he's got himself, I don't know, you must feel comfortable where you're at right now, your medic meds, you know. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's just where I'm sitting. I, Do you think of the, him living with his father, have you met his father? No, I haven't met his father. Okay. So you don't know if this is going to be a good thing for him or a bad no, thing for him at this point? Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have any more questions for him? All right, thank you very much for your time. Welcome. <coughs> All right, does anybody have any, any more questions uh, for him? Is there anything before we ask for uh, a recommendation? Hmm? Would you like to say anything more before I ask for oh, a vote? Yeah. Um, so you don't have to. You don't have to. I, I, I don't yeah, need yeah. to oh, force you to. Uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. Okay. All right, does anybody want to make a motion? I'm going to make a motion to deny to um, 2713 Humboldt Road, Department 5. Is there a second? I'll Aye. second. Okay. All in favor of that motion? Now let's go ahead and vote. Motion to deny fails three to two. Okay, um, so the motion failed in terms of denying you that particular location. <coughs> Um, I would like to make a motion uh, to approve you to 2713 Humboldt Road um, for a period of 60 days, at which time I, I would like to um, also hear back from Circles of Support in regards to your, your personal situation with your father. Mm -hmm. And I'd like your father here too. Because what I want to determine ultimately is, is this a good place for, for you to be and, and, and try to understand that. Um, I also, um, from my particular standpoint, if, if there's any information relating to um, the, your health as regards to the medications and, and issues, whether they're, you stay on them long term or off, that would be important for me to understand again. So again, my motion is to approve 2713 Humboldt, uh, apartment five, address specific for a period of 60 days. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. And what's your father doing these days? He is working maintenance. Where at? Here, you know. Oh. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and vote. Motion to approve passes three to two. Okay. You've been approved to move to 2713 Humboldt Avenue, uh, uh, apartment five, address specific, it will be sent there. And our meeting within six days, which will be January 9th, you'll, you gotta come back. If you don't show up, you'll automatically be booted out, okay? All right, Again, I'll have so to bring my father. Yep, and as much information you can in regards to your current health situation, okay? All right. All right, thank you. Um, Any other questions? I was gonna. Wanna, I don't want to write it down. But you'll, you'll be sent a letter oh, to that location. Yep. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, next up is Mr. White. All right. Um, 
Mr. White, we're here to uh, hear your appeal to move to. <coughs> Okay. Okay. So you want sixteen twenty? Okay. For, uh, Forest Glen Drive, correct? All right. Okay. Um, how long have you lived there, sir? Since June. June twenty. Okay. You know you're in violation of the ordinance at this point. We understand that. So I am his legal guardian. Okay. He is in protective placement. Uh, that address is a group home okay. run by Guardian Hearts. So he was deemed incompetent to manage his affairs and placed in protective mm -hmm. placement mm -hmm. in that group home in June. Okay. So before he was assigned a probation officer in Green Bay just recently. And so when he met with the probation officer, that's what we were instructed to do is then file for permission for him to remain in that group home. Okay. All right. Thank you for the, the background on that. Um, okay. So again, w what we're looking to do is, is talk about your, your sexual offense back in 2015. Um, again, is if you refer to the person as the victim, if we talk about it, okay? And just don't refer to them in, by their personal name or it was my my sister's kid or anything like that. Just, just refer to them as the victim. Mm -hmm. Second thing is if we do want to talk about your treatment programs, you have the right to do that either in public session or in private session. Which would you prefer? Private. Private? Okay. Um, so let's get started here. First of all, um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the offenses that you committed against the kids? Can you tell us what happened on the first one back in November of 2015? Can you tell me what happened? I had sex with an underage person while I was underage, 17 years old. And I've gotten pictures of her private parts. Okay. So, you were 17 and she was 15? Or 12 years old, looks like. 12. 12, okay. Did you know the victim prior to this? Yes. Okay. How did it come about that uh, that uh, she uh, uh, alerted the authorities, do you know? Her mom did. Her mom did, okay. So can you tell me why you did what you did? Honestly, I don't know why I did. I found out I was a sex addict, so that might have been the reason I did it, because I just looking for sex anywhere. Okay. Was she your only victim? Yes. And it happened multiple times? Once. But Once. I... Go ahead. So he was charged uh, in tribal court, and then there were charges dropped in tribal court. So he was charged and convicted in tribal court for having had intercourse with her on tribal land. He did a year in jail for that. And then those charges that were dropped, that were the images on the phones, because they both sent pictures back and forth to each other, uh, were picked up by Shawano County, and those are what was played out just recently. And so that is why we find ourselves before a Green Bay probation officer because he is a resident of Green Bay because he's in a group home. Okay, so the, the different offenses... It was the same girl. So all these offenses here listed for, basically there's three different offenses that are listed here. Exposing uh, genitals. This is all to the the same Take same her. victim. Yeah. Okay, is that how you see it, officer? Yeah, that's what I like to have matches. Okay. <laughs> did, does it say in the in the course record if he did this only at at, at one time all these things, or was it, the course over multiple times? You know, based on what I have, which is a complaint that's from Sean Cohen, it was a one time. Okay. Yes, all right. Thank you. So I guess the next question generally I have is, is why is he deemed incompetent in terms of? I think that needs to go on. Oh, it needs to go in private session in terms does. of medical? Okay, yeah. okay, all right. Um, does anybody have any more questions related to his crime? Okay. 
All right, uh, pursuant to uh, Wisconsin's uh, code, we are going to move into uh, a private session, so I need a motion to move it to private session. So I'll make moved. that motion. Okay, we have a first and a second. All in favor All of right. that? Right. Hang on a quick second, folks. We just have to take a quick vote for this. Okay. Back in public okay. session. Back in public session. You want to take a picture? Can you, can you oh, grab it? Oh, she's got it. Okay. Okay, we're, we're back in public session. We did have a chance to uh, speak with Mr. White in regards to his treatment programs and his, his current um, situation. Uh, the board asked several questions relating to that and, and got uh, more background as it relates to it. Um, is there any other questions that you have for him in regards to his current status? Anybody? Okay. Uh, does anybody want to make a motion in regards to Mr. White? I'll make a motion to approve Mr. White to 1624 Forest Glen Drive. That's I'll second that. Okay. okay. Um, be before we vote on that, I, I, I'm against this in, in just the way you, you uh, had the motion. Um, I, I'm okay with him living at 1620 um, Forest Glen. Forest Glen uh, so long as his current care situation is in place. In other words, so in other words, if, if his uh, protective custody would end, then I, I'm not okay with it. In other words, then he'd have to come in front of us again. So I just want to just let you know I'm going to vote no for this because I think that's very important. I don't think that this is a type of facility that he could live in if he wasn't in protective custody. Well, he's in protective placement. That that gets renewed every year. You have to go in front of a court system. Correct. And, and that's, and I don't know what, if you need a paper sent to you guys no, yearly? No, 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 so my, my, my point is in regards to this particular motion. Sure. So she, and her question is, is if he wasn't under protective custody, could he still live in this group, group home? Yeah, I have clients that are not a protective place. We prefer a protective place because they come back, and uh, they will come back to our facility if they were in elopement risk. That's pretty much what a protective placement is. Correct me if I'm wrong. If they take off, they just come well, that's back. That's a part of it. That's part of it. But there's a greater dynamics of it. But like I said, I'm not an attorney or nothing like that. But Patty could probably explain that more. Well, I guess maybe can you explain it okay. so that if I have okay. to adjust my motion? I get I the protective placement basically says that the court has when he was deemed incompetent and and a guardian was assigned also said that he needed to be protectively placed outside of the home. So okay. at this point, until that, until the court would change that, he is protectively placed. What happens is that every year there's what's called a Watts review. Okay. And that Watts review basically would say, oh, he's, he, he's not in need of protective placement, he can be returned home that would be, and he would be taken out of the group home at that point. Okay. Well, when does that end? What, what is that one date? I, the, it's June 19th that he was, that he, the guardianship and protective placement went into effect. The protective placement doesn't ever end. It's just a Watts, it's, it's not renewed every year. It's a Watts review, which basically says we will continue with this, or he's going home, or he's he no longer needs protective placement. It does, so I don't want to confuse you by saying every year he's he's again protectively placed. He is protectively placed all, for the entirety at this point. It's just that it, the protective placement has to be reviewed by the court every year to say that. Does protective placing it, you know, is this working? Is what's going? We have okay. to tell the court what's happening, but the protective placement really isn't a year by year thing. Okay. Does that make sense? Am I being clear or not? Um, 
Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, what are you? <laughs> well, just because, I mean, I'd like to then say once that review happens, but I'll never know when that review happens. Then the, every year it has to happen by? Every 12 months, basically. Every 12 yep. months, probably in the month of June. I, I can't say for sure by the 19th. <clears throat> right. But I would say that every year there's a Watts review. And the, and the protect, basically the protective placement will continue until there would be an order from the court saying that he needs to be placed, that he, he no longer needs to protective be protectively custody. placed. Yep. Okay. So the protective placement's in, in placement much longer than a Watts review. Like, you know, if the Watts review, um, says it doesn't need to be in a group home, he's still protected, but he can do it at home. Right. So okay. I guess what I'm saying is he's still under guard, like he's under a permanent guardianship. He's under a permanent protective placement. The Watts review is, sep is, is just a check, letting the court know where, where does he stand with this placement because of course, least restrictive, if somebody no longer needs to be in placement, you want to send them home. So it, it would be going down not yeah, so know, I, I guess how I kind of look at it is you're you're I gotta reword it. <coughs> I think. You think? <laughs> I think. <laughs> so do uh, so we need to withdraw it or we need a vote? Because there was a second. Oh was there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think we need to vote. Okay. So go ahead and let, let's vote. Okay, and, and then we'll come back for probably uh, another motion. So right now the motion is to approve him. Then vote passes three to two. <laughs> okay. Thank you, people understand the voting process. <laughs> so, all right, well. Go. Uh, you are approved six to 1620 Forest Glen Drive, okay? Um, address specific, if you do move from this location, then you would have to come in front of the board again, all okay. right? Okay, that's it, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, going forward, what I'd, what I'd like, because there's been several confusing mm -hmm. votes tonight. I think there's some there, there's some mis there's misunderstanding in regards to what we're actually voting on and what a right. yes means and what a no means. Right. Okay. So what I'd like for the rest of this meeting, you know, for sure, and that's maybe the next one, is, is that before we vote, you you say, I'd like you to repeat what the motion is and what a yes vote means and what a no vote means. Fair enough. Right? Great. Uh, next up is uh, Mr. Nathan Scheel. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? All right. So you're currently at 2670 University Avenue? Correct. And you want to move to uh, 1115 Cherry Street, right? Correct. Okay. Why do you want to move? Uh, the 2670 is a halfway house. Okay. So I'm in, get discharged from the 27th of this month. And then I will have basically nowhere to live. So I found a <coughs> landlord after about two months of searching that was willing to rent to me, knowing my offenses. And that's the main reason I want to live there. That and it's close enough where I can still get to work. Okay, and where are you working at? I work at New Tech Metals in New Franken. Alright. So I'm just checking out one other thing here. It's kind of slow. Yeah, sure. Why don't we start with uh, your offense? Uh, again, just make sure you refer to the person as the victim, and uh, don't refer to them by you know as my brother's daughter or anything like that. So why don't you go to tell us a little bit about uh, your offense? The current offense I'm on right now. No, the, the sexual offense. 
Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I have two. Okay. So do you want me to start with the, the current one? The most current one, yes, please. Um, the current one I'm on now, I was contacted by a girl, I believe it was on MySpace. Um, sent me a friend request. Probably typed some kind of a message, you know, hi, how are you, whatever. Um, I accepted on the profile that said the girl was 18 years old. We chatted online for, I don't know, multiple times for weeks. Um, at some point she told me she was not 18. She told me that she was 17. But she turns 18 in a few months. I didn't really think a whole lot of that. Um, we continue to chat. I don't really know like the time frames. I know it was, we probably chatted for three months total. But over the course of the three months, every so often she told me she's not really that age, that she's a year younger. And that went on a couple times until she told me she was 15, about to turn 16. At that time, did you already have intercourse with her? No. Okay. No, we were just talking. All right. Um, she had said that she had moved from Florida and that she was doing the area and she didn't have any friends. and She was like freshman, sophomore in high school, I think. Ironically, I was in a similar situation. I moved from somewhere up to Michigan when I was a freshman in high school, and I kind of I felt a little sorry for it because I remember going through that when I was that age, not okay. having any friends at a new school, and but so eventually, go ahead. No, I was going to say. So, what was the? Did you eventually have intercourse with her? No. It was actually an undercover police officer. Okay, so you went to meet her? I went to go, yeah, she asked me to meet her and I went to go meet her. Okay. And, and you were ballpark 33 at the time? 32, yeah. Okay. All right, is that? Yeah, I'm just Michigan offense, I have very little, but okay. what he's saying <clears throat> matches the little I have. Okay. Why did they charge you federally? Um, because it was a computer. Um, it was interstate, cross state lines, interstate thing with a computer. Because where was the girl? Where were you supposed she to be? She was in Little Swamco. Okay. Yeah, cross state lines. Okay. Okay. How about the 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 case in in two thousand? The case in two thousand. It's a long time ago, so I'm gonna do my best. Um, I was confused with, isn't that what we were just talking nope, about? No, that was the no. 2010. That was 2010. Go ahead. Um, it was like March 2000. I had been at a friend's house drinking, doing drugs. Um, LSD, cocaine, alcohol. Anyway, it got to be, I think, about 3 in the morning, and he wanted to have some alone time with his girlfriend. So I left, I went back to the place I was staying in an apartment building. And I tried to go to sleep, but if you know anything about drugs, LSD and cocaine, not so much with sleep. So I lay there for a while, and I decided to get up and take a walk. And I went outside, walked around the neighborhood, and when I came back to the apartment building, I got the idea to start checking doors to see if any were unlocked. And mainly my purpose in that was to find stuff to steal. Okay. Um, I found an apartment that was unlocked that actually was right down the hall from where I was staying, and I n had seen the girl that lived there. Um, 
so I closed the door and I went back to where I was staying and decided that I was going to go and, and rape this girl. I don't really know what I was thinking at the time, but I got everything ready, grabbed some duct tape, a knife in case I needed it, and I went back to the apartment. I opened the door. I got maybe a few steps in the door and I was confronted by her. Um, I think she asked me what, what I was doing in there. Um, I took a step towards her and she ran for the bedroom. When she ran, I chased her, forced the bedroom door open. I pushed her on the bed. I sat on her, I think, stomach and like restrained her and she was screaming so I put my hand over her mouth. And at that point, normally what I tell people is at that point she had made so much noise that I was afraid and I got up and ran. But the real truth is even though she didn't really have much clothing on, um, I realized that none of that was, anything that was happening was sexually arousing to me at all. Like I just, I don't know, I... So did you leave? Yeah, I, I immediately just got up and ran out of the apartment. I'd had like fantasies about that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like growing up, I think I saw something on TV once or something, and kind of I had that fantasy, and I tried to act it out that night. And in the midst of it, realized that that's just not something that I'm capable of doing. Um, anyway, I ran out of the apartment and was later picked up by the police. Okay. Um, any more questions on his uh, assault? Okay, one of the things I didn't ask you is, is that uh, if we do want to talk about your uh, any treatment programs, you have the right to do it in a public or a private session? Oh, that's fine. Okay. Um, Looks like you had outpatient uh, sex offender treatment, is that correct? Correct. Okay, did you complete it? Yes. Right. When did you complete it again? Come back to your certificate. It would have been 20, yeah, in 2007. Okay. All right. How long have you been working? at uh, your current job? A little over three months. And what do you do for them? I'm a welder. Okay. Anybody have any questions regarding those treatment programs? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to just be real honest with you. T tell, me, tell me why we should let you live in the city of Green Bay. I, I kind of need to kind of hear it from you. Um, you were you were very honest in regards to your crime and, and how violent the second one or the first one was. Um, so I'm you know, granted they were they were ten years apart these things, um, but it doesn't give me a, a great feeling that you know you repeated it in essence by going online and potentially you know having sex with a with a fifteen year old. So tell, tell, me, tell me what you've learned in your treatment program and, and tell me why, why we should give you an opportunity to live in Green Bay what, versus you know, living in New Franklin. Well, let me start with saying that, I mean, Green Bay is like the greatest city, right? The home of the Packers. Um, but aside from that, my probation set up here. My treatment's going to be set up here. Um, I've looked everywhere outside of Green Bay to try to find housing, 
in the area, and I, I looked for two months. And there, there really just isn't anything. Um, I feel like I could be an asset to the community. I'd be willing to do anything that I can to prove that. Well, what are you doing right now? Um, obviously, you got a job. I got a job. Um, what do you, you know, it looks like you're going to be going to live alone. Um, as I look at your, um, let's get back down here. Um, looks like you have some family with, within town, is that correct? I actually live in Dupier. Okay, well, up here, okay. So it looks like you got some support here. Um, well, what do you what do you think you can do within the community to make it better? I can start volunteering. Okay. I recently started going to church, and I, I want to get more involved in that. But I think volunteering would be a good thing for me too. Okay. What kind of volunteering? Anything that I can actually do being a sex offender, I guess, would be the the criteria. So which, which shift do you work on at the metals company? First shift. Okay, so like seven, six, to, 7 to 3 or 6 to? 6 a.m. So we're working until 4.30 right now. Okay. All right. When did you actually get out of prison? July 10th. Of this year? And then you went straight to the halfway house? Yes. <clears throat> okay. All right. Anybody have any more questions for him? Anybody want to speak either for or against this, this gentleman? Come on up, please. So there's not a paper up there for me to fill out, but okay. Um, my name is Sue Ann, and I'm the federal case manager at uh, Marshall Halls, which is at a correctional service. Okay. Sue Ann, what's your last name? Skankis, S-K-I-N-K-I-S. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. So, um, so Nathan is currently a BOP inmate um, until his release date on 11-27. Um, so for him to leave the halfway house before then, he would have to meet all the requirements for home confinement, which we found that he has. Um, he has done very well at New Tech Metals. Um, he was originally um, a 10th through seek and has now been hired on. Um, I have um, many conversations with um, New Tech Metals. Um, monthly, sometimes weekly, depending on what his schedule is. Um, he's always doing exactly what they want. Um, he's working overtime. Uh, right now they're in 10-hour shifts, and sometimes that includes weekends. Um, he's had no major incident reports while he's been at the facility. Um, part of being ready for home confinement is budgeting, um, saving money, and he's done that. Um, he has also um, bought a car. He's been trans he so you have to meet requirements to do each thing. So he did everything he needed to do to have a vehicle, so now he has that. Um, he has completed transitional skills. Um, it's a nine-week required program through the BOP. Um, so as far as me looking at what he's done, he's ready for home confinement, which would be him living in the community and not the halfway house. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any more questions for her? All right, thanks. I, I, I have one more question. Go ahead. Well, I'm people to talk. Oh, I'm sure. Okay. Who else would like to speak either for or against him? Sir, come on up. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. I didn't see him. Hi. I'm uh, Robert Herman. I'm with the uh, federal probation office here in Green Bay. Okay, go ahead, sir. Um, did you guys get my letter I composed to? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. it's in, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah, I mean, essentially everything that I know about Nate, I kind of summarized in there. Um, but I guess long story short, I think there's a lot in place that we can do to mitigate his risk to the community. Um, he's actually got a GPS bracelet on as we speak. Uh, he was deemed an SBN case, so he's going to be a lifetime registrant for that. Uh, he'll have uh, computer and internet monitoring uh, while he's on supervision with us. Uh, he's going to be on paper with us for 20 years. Um, as he noted, he's working. Uh, so that's great. He's going to be in monthly sex offender mental health treatment here in Green Bay. Be subjected to yearly polygraphs. Um, so I think there's a lot of things that uh, we can do to mitigate his risk of the offender. So. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I have a question. Uh, I have a, oh. Oh. Has um, he taken a polygraph test already? No. So he comes on paper with us officially the 27th. 
Oh, after. Yeah. Okay. And okay. so once we get him signed up, that'll be one of the first things that we do. Yeah. Your letter says that you know, the, uh, the residence, the proposed residence, does not appear to be close to parks, schools, or daycares. It actually is. It's three blocks from East High School. Are you aware of that? So I spoke with his landlord or proposed uh, landlord, um, and I believe that's past the 1,500-foot rule. Um, okay. So we were comfortable with that. There wasn't any um, families or minor children residing in this uh, complex, so that was also something that we considered as well. Um, so I guess that's another, I think, positive attribute for Nate um, is uh, he's got a willing landlord, which I think is a huge hurdle for a lot of our folks that are trying mm -hmm. to obtain housing here. So. Okay. Thank you. One, one other question I have is um, you completed your SOT training in 2007, you said? Yes. But your last offense was in 2010, right? Yes. I took some more treatment in the, in the BOP as well. So my, my question relates to, okay, you completed the treatment in 2007, but you still went ahead and, and went to potentially reoffend. Correct. Even though you went through the process of looking at, you know, the issues that, that got you there in the first time. So what drove you to kind of throw that off the, out the window? There were several things, but I think the biggest one was I was focused on not like forcing myself sexually on somebody. And at the time in my eyes, also I was using marijuana too when I was on this one, but that does cloud my judgment, which I'm aware of. Obviously, I won't be able to do that for probably ever again. Um, I'm going to have probably weekly UAs for the next 20 years. Um, but at the time, I th was thinking that if the person was willing, then it wasn't really a sex offense. Does that make any sense? I mean... No, but yes, I understand where you're coming. I understand. I mean, I was focused on not like going out and forcing myself on somebody, and I kind of let that one slide in the back door. <coughs> it wasn't really my focus wasn't on that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess that's probably my gonna be my answer on that. Like, I I wasn't really trying to harm anybody. Right. Okay. But now I realize that the potential was there to harm somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else have any more questions for him? Anybody want to make a motion? Just some, some general thoughts here. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of torn here. I, I, between, I don't really trust you, sir. I'm going to be honest with you, okay? The question I'm debating in my mind is, is the, the, the way your probation works, it, is, that, is that good enough of a comfort in, in my mind that you're not going to have that potential to to reoffend. So, let, no, let me finish. Let me finish. So, <coughs> so I, I and the reason is because you had that opportunity to have sexual offender treatment, and it tells me that you felt okay. This person was a willing participant, regardless of their age. So, if they were ten years old, is that a willing participant? And they said they went out sex. I mean, where do you draw the line? Okay. So, I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not sure you're there in regards to where you need to be mentally to, to not have this again. So th that's where I'm kind of sitting at, at this particular time. So I, I'm kind of weighing the, the safeguards that the federal government's putting in place for you, the fact that you do have a job, versus the fact that I'm, I'm not comfortable with where you're at right now. So I don't know what everybody else's thoughts are. Can I add one thing? Go ahead. I just want to say that when I was on state probation, or parole, actually, it was. 
Um, I did two years. Never had any incidences. Never a single write up. <coughs> nothing. I do very well under supervision. I, I did eight and a half years in the BOP. Never had one write up. Um, I did take some more sex offender treatment while I was in the BOP. And I've learned some more things about myself that I didn't know back then. Right. I'm Ten years older now, a little bit wiser. Um, I know that when I get to a place where I'm depressed, where I'm feeling hopeless, that's a big trigger for me. That's where I was when I committed this recent offense. Mm -hmm. I lost my job, the recession of 08. Um, my marriage was falling apart. Things were in a bad place for me. I was using a lot of drugs. Um, not saying that any of that is an excuse. Right. But just kind of giving you a, what my mental state was at the time. Okay. I also found out that when I was in the BOP that <clears throat> My thyroid is off, and I found out that that can cause depression. Um, I started meds in the BOP. Since I've been on the meds, I haven't been in that deep, dark low that I would get in sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I try to have more of a positive attitude. I try to think positive. I try to use my, my tools from treatment, which is mostly just the if I have thoughts that are negative, to put that in my mind and try to think different thoughts. Okay. All right. Uh, does anybody want to make a motion in regards to him? I'm going to make a motion to approve Mr. Shai to 1115 Cherry Street. For 120 days, <coughs> and just to report back on how things are going. Okay. Uh, just specific? Yes. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any comments? <coughs> okay, let's vote. All right, so this is a vote to approve uh, Mr. Shai, uh, uh, approve vote supports him living at that address for 120 days. Motion passes three to two. Okay, so you've been approved to uh, move to one, uh, 1115 Cherry Street, address specific. You will have to come in front of us again with 120 days uh, to see how you're doing. I would also make sure if you have any documentation uh, when you go through your lie detector test and so forth like that from the federal government, you bring that as well. Okay. All right, if you don't show up, you'll automatically be deemed to not be able to live there anymore. This is the apartment number at 302. Um, there isn't one on the phone. There isn't one. So I guess it's anywhere within that building then. It would so be apartment 16 if that's where they're going to send them. Okay, apartment 16? 16. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you guys. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Nicholas Godwood. Sir, is it okay if I come up as his attorney? Sure, go ahead. Okay, attorney Chris Fraley. Okay, Mr. Uh, Godwood. Um, all right, I'm looking here where you want to live. Oh, the same place? Yeah, he wants to continue yes. living at his uh, mom and dad's house. So that's 3483 Char Charlevoix. 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 Okay, and how long have you been living there? 20 years. No, sen since your offense. Oh, um, a year and two months. Since you've been out? Correct. 
spent two days in jail. All right. So I'm assuming you had no clue that you were in violation of the ordinance by living there. Correct. Um, I, uh, so September 21st was um, the day. That was the day of sentencing. Sentencing, yep. Before Judge Kelly. Yep. And then I was recently put on probation the second week, the first or second week in October. Of this, so okay. So yeah, I was just recently, like just a recently. And a half okay, ago. that's what I'm, I'm yeah, asking. Yeah. So okay, so his conviction date looks like was July second. That's the day that he entered a plea, correct? Okay. To the charge to the two charges. Okay. And then he was sentenced on September twenty first. Okay. Of, of this year. So all right. Okay. All right. So again, before we start, I uh, just again want to make sure that you just refer to the person as the victim, uh, and that by a particular name, even if you had, it was my my sister or my cousin or anything like that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your conviction and what happened. Um, so I was 17 dating a 16 year old in high school. Okay. Um, and we had a consensual relationship for five, six months, I believe. And she was 16 at the time? Correct, and I was 17. Okay, let's stop there for a second. So it, it's my understanding that the law indicates that if it's 16 year old or older, that's that's not a child sexual offense. Am I wrong in that? A child under 18 cannot give consent. I or thought it was under the age of 16 cannot give consent. No. Oh, he was not charged with sexual assault. Right. It was, he was convicted of uh, capture and image of nudity, a felony. And okay. One under count, the age of 18. Yeah. And then one count of possession of child pornography for okay. a person under age 18. So two okay. felonies. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Can I say one thing real quick? Go ahead. Um, this is. We're, I'm not quite sure we're supposed to be here um, because in plea negotiations, negotiations with the DA and judge's comments and everything, he didn't specifically say anything about um, registry. Um, so we were kind of surprised when um, my PO said he had to register. Um, so this is kind of like a shock to us. But okay. Yeah, we, you know, we have to do this until... Sex, sex offender registry wasn't ordered by the judge, correct? Right? Oh, it's not. Um, and then we're actually going in front of the judge in January to see what he's going to say, either yes or no, because it wasn't given at the time of um, sentencing. <coughs> okay. If that makes sense. I thought we only hear cases that are 948s, <coughs> which is one of them. Which the is one of them. Possession the child of child pornography. pornography. Correct. Right. <coughs> yeah, so that in itself should put him on the registry, at least in the state of Wisconsin. Judge. I understand so, that. I'm just I, reading from the law. Right. If I understand. Okay. I have a copy of the transcript. If you, if no, you no, that, that's that's fine. Okay. So, you see anything that the from your record standpoint that the, the judge didn't recognize that this as a uh, well, the child just, pornography? Yeah, I just printed off the UC cap. I mean, the, the sentence it talks about you know the J uh, jail time and you know sentence. Yeah. Okay. He, he got he got sixty days jail imposed and stayed on each count to be used at the probation agent's discretion. Okay. So the agent has the power to you know put him in jail. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, so I guess we're going to continue. So go ahead and, and, and finish in regards to your relationship with yeah. this girl. Um, I was seventeen. She was sixteen. Um, consensual relationship. Um, we had sex quite a few times before this happened, um, and then when this happened, um, she was laying on her stomach on the couch we had naked. I took a picture from above her mm -hmm. um, and showed her um, her butt and um, her vagina. Okay. Um, and I believe there's a couple other pictures that were sent to her, or sorry, were sent to me from her. Um, and I believe there were a couple other ones that were um, non-nude of her as well. Um, and these were found on my laptop. Okay. Um, I didn't acquire that laptop until the beginning of 2016, and all this happened in the middle of 2015. I had uh, an iPod Touch at the time. Um, and, um, you know, not quite sure how everything got on there, but unfortunately, you know, I did what I did, kept the pictures, which is unfortunate for me, um, and I'm, you know, paying for that now. Okay. 
How was it found out that they were on your computer? How did um, this So, a f my brother's girlfriend at the time, um, this was summer, beginning of summer 2017, um, was looking at my laptop. Um, I believe it was her, my brother, and a friend of ours were kind of all um, using it. Um, and they saw some other things on there, um, some actual child pornography on there, um, and that's what got reported. And then during the investigation, they found a couple of pictures of her as well. Um, and that's how that came about. Just to add something real quick, if, if I may. Um, there, he had a friend named Hunter Van Dyes who would come over and use the computer a lot, and then other people had access to the computer. And so the child pornography charges, there were six charges. Those were dismissed and then amended to <coughs> these two charges um, involving captured image of nudity and possession of child porn with, by a person under age 18, uh, r related to uh, the victim who was a former girlfriend. Correct. Okay. So that's how that all came about. All right. So it looks like, uh, again, one of the things uh, you can talk about your, uh, your programs, either in public or private, which would you prefer? Public's fine. Okay. So it looks like to me that you're, you're signed up to get some sexual offender treatment, is that correct? Correct. Yeah, I had a meeting with um, Rebecca at Attic yesterday. Okay. Um, and I saw today to get a letter from her uh, about future treatment. So are you signed up or? Um, she's putting together a recommendation to my PO in the court. Um, and I believe the next time I talk to my probation officer, which is next week Wednesday, I believe she'll we'll get that started there. Okay. We also have just a copy. You've authorized me to yeah. provide it. Um, a, I call it a psychosexual evaluation, psychological evaluation that by Dr. Uh, Sherman. Kaplan. Um, or Kaplan, excuse me, Dr. Kaplan, Sherman Consulting. Oh. And he provided some opinions that my client doesn't meet the criteria of a, of a sex offender. Um, so. And that was back in September of 2017. Is that the one you sent us? Yes. Okay. Yep. So I'm just reading this this case in regards to his 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 makeup. Oh, you do have the one there. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any more questions for him in regards to his either treatment programs or the conviction? Um, and I did see. Hang a second. Hang a second. I just want to see if anybody else has any more questions. Anybody? Okay, go ahead. Um, I did see Stephen Kaplan five or six times after that just because he was a really good therapist. Um, I've seen four to five different therapists, and he was the only one I really liked a lot. Um, I haven't seen him in about five months because he took a leave of absence and he's gone until the middle of October. Um, and the middle of October is kind of when we found out that I had to register in this whole kerfuffle. Okay. And, and he's been ordered to uh, participate in SOT treatment, sex offender treatment with James Drake at uh, Family Services. Okay. And that, that process is underway. Hopefully he can get into the programming soon, but he needs the help of his agent. That started. Right. But he's open and amenable to any kind of treatment that you know, comes his way. Okay. And one other thing, he um, he's lived basically at 3483 Charlotte Boy Court all his life. He lives with his mom and dad. He's not married. He has no kids. The mom and dad are here. Um, they don't have any kids in the whole family, so there won't there wouldn't be a, a concern about you know him having contact with children. <coughs> children don't live in the house and children don't come to the house. Okay. Do you have a job? Yes. Where do you work? Um, I work at Nordor Sport and Cyclery in Fish Creek, Wisconsin. 
Um, it's like an hour and 15 minute drive each way. Right. Um, and I've been there for four-ish years. I was working summers, seasonal summers. Mm -hmm. um, but now I got promoted to full time up there. So I work uh, in the summer, like April to September, I work six days a week, 55 hour weeks. Um, now in the winter I'm working four or five days a week, 30 to 45 hours a week. Okay. All right, uh, if there's no more questions, anybody want to speak either for or against him? Uh, why don't you come up one at a time? Cliff. Cliff Lapp, his father. Okay. LAPP. Got him right here. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I'm, I'm Nick's father, and um, so we, my wife and I have been married, we moved here in 93, we've been married since 94, and so, you know, he's lived up with us the whole time, and when he was, um, when this first happened, when he was arrested, I was like, I knew from knowing him and his behavior and what he said that he was not a pedophile, so we paid the money for his bail, which was, for us, was a lot. And then we paid the lawyer. For us, it was a lot of money. And if I thought he was a pedophile, I would have said, no, we're not paying anything. You know, because we can't really afford it. And it's like, I wouldn't do it anyway. When I was um, about 10 years old, I was abused by my grandmother's friend who was a Methodist minister. And it turned out later, I found out he abused my sister and my brother, like after me. I didn't know about that. And, you know, I've read that pedophiles I think they said on average they have like 120 victims each person. So if I thought he was a pedophile, I'd be like, no, we're not going to support him because this isn't, this is not right. You know, but I knew he was not, and that's why we've been supporting him like this the whole way. Okay. Um, and I was going to mention that he did see Dr. Kaplan um, prior to sent. I'm sorry, Jim Drake prior to sentencing, and he had an evaluation with him there. Um, but he's. He's lived with us the whole time, and in the in the um, from Dr. Kaplan that you got, they said his main problem was, was he was suffering from some depression, and he needed like a stable environment. And I think if he lives with us, that would be that would be the most stable thing for him. His bedroom is adjacent to ours on the upper level, and his bed is actually I measure it today. His bed jack is actually 12 feet from our bed, like through the wall. So he he's in the bedroom right next to us. And um, I just feel that that would be, you know, the easiest for, for all of us. Okay. You know, if, if he kept living with us and we just kept um, being together as a family versus him living somewhere else, you know. Right. Uh, I don't worry. All right. I appreciate it. <coughs> thank you. Did you have any more questions for me? No. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Mother Yolanta Godwood. By Yola. Um, I do have a letter from um, my best friend who was visiting us at, um, from Toronto, Canada, okay. who's known Nick his whole life, and unfortunately she um, had to go back to work, so she was here all of last week. Sure, go ahead. Okay. And my comments are basically um, sort of like my husband's. We've been you know, living on a cul-de-sac. Uh, there are no children at all uh, underage anywhere near us. Um, he's been a wonderful child. Uh, we're all sort of surprised that um, all this happened, and um, we've all been learning, um, as well as Nick um, seeing his counselors, and we sit down and chat a lot. Um, he graduated from Preble with a 3.0, ACTs were about um, 29. He did go to university up in Calgary, Alberta, for a whole year. Okay, so when he came home, he was planning to be home for the summer, and then he wanted to go to a school out in Hood River, Oregon. Uh, where his um, grandmother and uncle currently live. Uh, but when all this happened, he was unable to apply or do anything like that. So he was planning to, like I said, stay and work for the summer at Mordor. And then he decided to take the year off. And all of this has sort of been, um, I guess, um, continuing for the last year and a half. And now we know he's on probation for the next four years. So we're trying to just um, get him um, on to some online classes when he's available to start using the internet, at least, you know, for his education. And then hopefully he'll be able to go to school full time somewhere. Okay. 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 All right, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Your name, ma'am? Karen Steingrave. Go ahead. <coughs> A little bit. 
give you about three minutes, okay? So I don't know if you want to paraphrase it or go ahead. I'm here today to speak on behalf of Nick Godwin. While I understand this hearing is to determine residency for Nick, I'm compelled to share some personal observations with you as I hope they will be relevant to your determination regarding this decision. My comments won't be lengthy. Many times in casual conversations with friends, we discuss topics where I find myself saying, I'm glad I was a teenager when I was, and not now. It was a much nicer and easier time to be a teenager growing up. We didn't have the internet and all the devices available to monopolize our time. We interacted with each other face to face. Five years ago, the Press Gazette printed a full page article on how Rhinelander, Wisconsin was experiencing an epidemic in regards to sexting. What was that? Then I experienced it firsthand when a colleague I worked with received a phone call and ran out of work crying. A friend of her daughter called her to say she thought her daughter was going to commit suicide based on a text she received from her. It was good her friend called. My friend's daughter received the help that she needed. The point I want to make here is that device technology has evolved so much and so fast over the years. But a 17-year-old teenager is still just that. A 17-year-old teenager trying to figure out what the world is all about and how it affects them. But now they have all of these devices at their disposal. As most of us probably know from experience, <coughs> many times as teenagers, we didn't make the best decisions that we should have. That's because we were just 17. I have known and interacted with Nick since he was born. From babysitting him, sorry, first days of school, summer camp, proms, graduation, and many things in between. At 16 years of age, Nick attended and graduated from Barnett Bicycle Institute in Colorado Springs, Colorado as a certified bicycle mechanic. With this expertise, he has worked for the same employer in Door County for four years. I believe that this achievement and length of employment at one job at Nick's age is a testament to his enthusiasm, commitment, and character. I live two miles from a neighborhood that is a designated area for registered sexual offenders to reside. I don't drive down any of the roads through that area. What if my car broke down? I would be scared to death of who might be walking by and why they're in the neighborhood at all. Nick has lived at home his whole life. This experience has taken a toll on Nick. It is my firm belief that he should continue to live at home with his parents. It's important for him to have the love and the support of family through this time. There are no children under 18 where the family lives. Nick's not a threat to anyone. Requiring him to live where he would be surrounded by convicted sexual offenders is not in Nick's best interest. It does, however, potentially place Nick in harm's way. I believe he should be allowed to live at home with his family. Thank you. All right, is there anybody else? Okay. Uh, you can have this back. Yeah, that's okay. your mom's. It's your mom's. All right, does anybody want to make a, a motion? I'll make a motion. For Mr. Nicholas Godwin to move to 3483 Charlevoix. Charlevoix? Charlevoix. Charlevoix Court, address specific. All right, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, let's go ahead and vote. Chance? Yeah. See what we're voting on. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, uh, we got it right. Motion passed unanimously. Okay. Um, Mr. Godwin, you're going to be allowed to move to 3483 Chavoy uh, Court. Okay. I, I think that this is a good opportunity for you. Don't waste it. Um, sir, if you made a mistake in your life and just kind of move forward. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, everybody. Yep. Uh, next, Mr. Randall. You want to grab? Oh, thank you. How do you move your own chair? After 14 years, I'm getting the hang of it. Okay. Okay, you're looking to move to 1212 Laura Lane, Harbor uh, Road? Yes, I just found out the address today. Okay. 
and I just found out that there was a place about a week ago, so I was unable to contact anybody to come speak for me. Um, they're kind of rushing because of my health and the fact that I'm living on the street. So things are moving really fast, and I kind of last the one to know. I'm not from Wisconsin, so I'm not sure exactly where this is either, other than it's somewhere on the west side. So did, who who found the... I'm working through NUCAP. Okay. Um, I've been out of prison for three years. Uh, at first I lived in my van till I got hit by a train. Um, I was then living with someone in Bellevue, and I was going to get past to live there, but a reporter found out, spread the word, and everybody started calling my PO, and I was forced to move, even though I didn't violate the law or break any rules. Um, because of the unanimous amount of t people calling, they forced me to move. Um, although uh, I did everything I was supposed to, working to stay there, uh, going before the board and everything. Um, my PO said that she did mention that I'd been living there for six months without problem. Most people said, oh, we didn't know that. But needless to say, I was forced to move. Okay. First question, was this actually published, his address? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're good there. Okay. Um, okay. Um, in regards to, uh, again, your sexual offenses, we're going to go over them real quickly here. Again, just make sure you refer to the person as the victim. Not by personal name or affiliation, okay? Yes, we did this uh, last month. Yeah. All right. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I know you weren't here last mm -hmm. month. In terms of, do you have any questions with regard to his offense? No? No. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions just, to, just overall in terms of um, his offense? I'm confused. You were here last month, but we don't see anything. Then you withdrew or something. Yes. No, yeah. what happened was is they had set me up with a building that was condemned. So and I, so it was put off to this month, but that particular place is still listed as condemned, so they had to find me a new place. So did we talk to you last month? I don't think we did. No, no. I've never really. I no. Okay, so I would like to hear about yeah. your offense if you could tell me um, what happened. Do you want the... So you have, you have three separate offenses, okay? Yes. So, you know, let's let's talk about the the offense um, listed here uh, with a 15-year-old back in 1988. Because you have three offenses, one in 1988, 1988 2000, and 2007. Yes, the 88, uh, she was 15, I was 19. Um, at the time, I was having the drugs and alcohol, and to make matters worse, I just got married and had a kid. Uh, I had absolutely no clue what I was doing. Um, I had no focus as to where I was going. Um, I was kind of blatantly overwhelmed, which increased my drug and alcohol use, and I thought, my wife at the time was 26, I was 19. Um, in my family, the male was usually much older than the female. It's what I grew up with, same thing with my brothers and sisters. My dad was 20 years older than my mother. Um, at the time, I was 19, she was 15, so in my mind, we were both kids. Um, I was, I think I was trying to, I realized the responsibility that I now had and I was trying to escape it. Um, I was very immature at the time. So what did you do? Um, well, I don't remember most of it. Uh, I remember that um, I heard somebody crying in our backyard, uh, asked her what was wrong, invited her in. Uh, but like I said, I was so drunk and so stoned, I don't remember much of anything. Um, the only thing that I remember from that particular point was that the judge stated that um, he didn't know what happened, something probably happened, but
but because the complaining party was a police officer of that county, he had no uh, other recourse but to find me guilty of fourth degree misdemeanor and gave me 90 days, I believe, in jail with Huber. All right. That's about all I remember of that particular incident. Yeah, but your second offense in 2000? Um, that basically, I let that go more than it should have. Um, <coughs> that was, I, my major problem has always been stupid decisions when it came to women. Um, I married a woman thinking it would improve our relationship. She had two kids. Uh, the 13-year-old was already on drugs. The 10-year-old was uh, violently out acting. So I thought if I married, it'd solidify everything, pull everything together and make everything right. I was wrong. Um, well, there was constant fighting between us. Um, so the, the victim in, in this particular case, was it someone within the house? Yes. Okay. And so what did you do to that victim? <sighs> it wasn't more of what I did is what I allowed to happen. Um, well, sir, that, that's not the case. I mean, you, you're convicted. Well, I'm trying not to okay. uh, list the victim, as you said. Right. Um, well, it's a sexual battery is what you right. got down here. Oh, um, the thing is... I went to, we were getting ready to go through a divorce, a violent divorce, and I'd already went to the police and because she'd threatened me with several accusations um, and filed a report. When I had, after that was done, um, both boys came to stay with me temporarily. And it was more of a, a hugging, more of a, I don't know what you call it. The youngest was kind of like clinging. And the older brother told the mother, and that's where that came out of. Okay, how about the last offense in 2005? That one I'm fighting because it didn't happen. That one blatantly didn't happen. Um, but you pled guilty on it. Yes. The reason being is I was in jail. My family came to me and they told me if I didn't take the <coughs> deal that they said they were going to make sure I never saw daylight again. Um, I've always had a distrust of the justice system and I balk it standing up against it. Um, if you look, I've always taken the deal. It's more of a low self-esteem thing. But they had offered me five in, three out. That was the deal. Um, I had a wife and kids that I was I had to take care of, um, and and everything that was going on. My attorney said, and I quote, "If you don't take the deal, I'm walking." He said, "Because they're going to bury you." All and right. so I took the deal. Okay, so what, what's the facts of ultimately on this last one? Yeah, well, pretty much what he's saying. Um, disclosure of a very young victim, somewhere around four years old. What, what did he say that, that he did? Uh, he was babysitting, his children were dropped off at his place. Uh, they were talking about her privates. Um, he touched her uh, vagina. Uh, that's what the child disclosed. Um, we investigated, uh, Mr. Randall denied uh, that he did it. Okay. Is there any more information on the, on the, on the second one in 2000? No, I don't even have a 2000 case. Okay. That was in Tennessee, by the way. Okay. All right. Um, if we want to talk about your treatment programs, can we do that in public? Almost definitely. I'm very proud of my treatment, actually. Yep, I, I read the, the treatment that, you, that you've that you gone through. Um, tell me what you've learned from that treatment. <coughs> well, I have nine left of the 60 from this, this SOT treatment. And actually, I finally found out who I was. 
I had no clue that I was, <laughs> I guess, way I saw myself and the way actually was I was were two different things. I didn't realize I had so many um, weaknesses. I didn't realize that the way I thought and what I thought was socially acceptable was so violently off. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in a very violent, sexually abusive, physically abusive life. Um, and it came to the point where I thought that that was normal. And since the police wouldn't intervene, I thought it was legal. So my whole concept of life was totally tweaked. Um, the second day, her second session of SOT, um, we started talking about our views. And <clears throat> I started looking at what was proper and what was improper, and I found that most of my life, the way I viewed life was listed as improper. I've had to reevaluate the way I look at life um, and how I deal with people. And it's not easy. I'm 50 years old. And to discover that most of your life, your brain was warped, to say the least. And the way you viewed life is more than disconcerting. Um, so what do you what do you do right now with, with your time? Are, are you completely disabled or are you working? Or? I'm completely disabled. Uh, I live on the street. Um, but I play guitar and I do uh, nature photography. So how do you intend to, to pay for this apartment? I get disability and SSI, 532 a month. Prior to this, uh, working with NUCAP, I was trying to find a place of my own. It never got to my criminal offense. My disability and low income killed me across the board. The place they found me actually was built for a handicapped person. It has ramp. The rooms are all set up for a handicap. This is the first one in three years that I've actually found that I can move into and the landlord has accepted. Um, and like I said, most of the time I never got to my criminal offense. I couldn't find one that I could get into. Right. So this is like a miracle. Um, I'm facing a lot of physical challenges, which includes two spinal surgeries coming up. Um, and, you know, I'm suffering from uh, first stage chronic pneumonia now, which is why my voice is so crappy. Um, basically, um, in order for me to move forward, in order for me to advance, and because I want to go back to school and just get an uh, occupation I can do for my wheelchair because I can't do any of my original occupations, which was construction, welding, heavy equipment, operation, mechanic. Um, I'm going to have to learn a whole new trade, uh, a whole new way of life. Um, and I need a stable place to do that from. There's no way I'll be able to do it living on the street. Um, in terms of the support system, who do you have? Um, well, my brother and, and family live up in Marinette County, so okay. they're pretty close. Um, but I also have Billy, who's my caseworker for NUCAP, my PO, Rebecca, who is the head of SOT. Um, I'm actually volunteering after my SOT for the aftercare because I don't think I'm done learning who I am yet. Um, I need to learn to, because right now I'm, I'm actually isolating myself from humanity. I'm, I'm getting to the point where I don't want to deal with people just because I don't want to make any mistakes. And um, Rebecca said that the aftercare will help me work through that so I can deal with people without the fear and, and anxiety that I'm going to make a mistake. Okay. Um, All right, does anybody have any questions for him? All right, does anybody uh, want to make a motion? I just have a request. Could you put your address up on the chat? Sure. It's right across from <coughs> Franklin Middle School, just down the street from Notre Dame. Okay. I still have no clue where it is. <laughs> is it between Mason and um, 
Mm -hmm. Upstart. I mean, um, between Mason and Walnut, yeah. Uh, or Sean, actually. Sean, Sean, yeah. Sean, yeah. It's uh, about uh, a block and a half out from the Boys and Girls Club, Westside Boys and Girls Club. Oh. That's the name. across the street from Franklin Middle School. Mm -hmm. It's not a good place to be, sir. Like I said, I didn't fight it. Right, I, I'm, I'm with you. And I'm it's the you. only place available. Okay. All right, does anybody want to make a motion? I'm really struggling because this is right across from the school. I'm just I'm really struggling with it. What what I was going to suggest was a, a brief acceptance. Um, maybe something where I have to come in and check in every so often uh, until you're comfortable with me being there. Like maybe um, the first time 30 days, maybe the second time 60 days. Just, you know, not an open out yes, but enough time for me to prove that I I, uh, I can do this without because <clears throat> I've been out three years I've had no violations no no uh, breaking of the law nothing it's anybody else's thought is there any way you can live with your brother you said no that's in Marinette County and I'm not allowed out of Brown County and have my brother huh? have you asked for a transfer I could, but my brother is right now supporting not only himself and his wife, both disabled, but my oldest sister and his youngest daughter and her kids. So that's not a possibility. And my mother is in assisted living. So I'm basically, as far as that goes, on my own. I, I, I just have the issue with the proximity to the middle school. Um, it's literally across the street. It's just, I know the apartment. I know the apartment building. That's why I thought maybe a, a come back in thirty days. Um, you know, hey, I, I'm well. I'm, I do whatever it means. You know, to, to prove that. How long have you been in your, your current physical situation in terms of a wheelchair? 14 years. It's gotten much worse in the last year. I uh, have to go into two spinal surgeries because it's gotten much, much worse. So in terms of the, the last offense in, in 2005, you were in a wheelchair at that time? Correct. But... Uh, I was, uh, like I said, that's one I've been trying to fight because it didn't happen. Essentially, she got pissed off because I married another woman. That's where the original came from. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I can't. I understand I, I, that. I can't take that into account, sir. I'm just, but, I have to count the, the sentence and the, what you pleaded, and that's I kind understand of fact that. for me. All right, does anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to deny Mr. Randall to 1212 Laura Lane, number B or 8. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and vote. How are we voting? Yes, how are we voting? <laughs> so a yes indicates that you agree with the motion. <laughs> Correct. A yes is a, is a motion, or is well, agreeing with the motion to deny. A yes is deny. A no is um, <laughs> against the motion. Mm. 
Motion to deny passes four to one. Okay, sir, so you've been denied to, to move to 12 yeah. or I, I mean, I, you know, I, this, this is a tough decision. I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, again, you can come back in front of the board. I think the big thing was the, the vote. Unfortunately, I understand what you made, the decision. Yeah. But I'm not going to live that long, not living on the street in the winter in my wheelchair. So this will probably be the last time I'm here. Thank you for your time and consideration. All right, thank you. Have a good night. Yep. Um, Scott Hendricks, is that correct? Hendricks. Hendricks. University Avenue right now? I'm actually homeless right now, waiting on the approval for this apartment. 904 Farland, number, number two? 19. 1904, should be, sorry. Should be 1904. Yeah, it is 1904. Yes. Okay. I was actually at the 2670 up till the 26th of last month. And how long were you living there? Uh, four months. It's the transitional living program. Actually, the case managers were all here earlier for another gentleman. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go over your uh, your offense. Uh, Again, just refer to the person as the as the victim. So tell us about the offense. Um, two thousand. I got out of prison September two thousand three. Um, I ended up meeting a girl from Manitowoc. I hung out there quite a bit. Um, the victim was actually a friend of a friend. Um, I had picked up one evening in Manitowoc and brought back to my grandparents' house here in Green Bay. Um, I violated her by touching her. Um, I know how old she was? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Um, we um, had intercourse. Um, I was, it, it was found out, it came to light, uh, I believe the next day when they left the house that she told her friend and I believe that um, like the friend um, told her mother and then her mother reported it. Okay. And so you were released when? From prison? Yep. Oh, geez. I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you the date. He's been here several times before. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You can quickly look at the other minutes if you want. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's been a while though since he's been here, right? Yeah. yeah. 12? Yeah, about 2012. What was that? Uh, 14th Ave. Yes. Laverne. Laverne. Drive. Laverne 634B. Yeah, mm -hmm. Laverne. Yeah. And you've had no other instances uh, in terms of any offenses with the law, correct? Um, no. Oh, well, 2014, I had a delivery uh, possession. Yeah, delivery of THC uh, possession with intent to deliver Schedule Three narcotics. So it was a prescription of Vicodin. I was gonna. I just told them basically, if they pay for the prescription, they could have the pills. Dumb on my part. Um, child neglect and um, keeper of a drug house. So what made you go those routes? What routes the, in terms the, of the drugs? Drugs. I went from the sex offense to the drugs. I don't know. Obviously, I wasn't a very good burglar back in the '90s either. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, trying to make a little light of the situation. But um, I don't know. It was just I smoked weed. Um, a friend of mine came to my house. Um, he asked for a little bit of it. He purchased it. Um, it was actually a stain. Um, where I it was like 3.96 grams of marijuana. Um, the DTF was involved. Are you working? Right I now? am. Where you work? Uh, I work at Carboline. Carboline. Carboline, yeah, mm -hmm. it's on Elizabeth uh, by American Foods. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Full time, part time. Full time. Uh, I work through ahead. Uh, I've been there about two and a half months now. Before that, I worked at Al's Hamburger. Um, I was in jail two months before that. Before that, it was uh, I actually worked at Angelina's and McCannery. I had two jobs before I went to jail. Right. 
All right, does anybody want to make a motion in regards to him? Unless there's anything else you'd like to say. Uh -huh. Well, actually there is. I mean, I'm 40 years old. Um, the last few years have been hard for me, I guess. Um, my case is fairly old, um, 2004, 14 years ago. Um, I did complete sex offender treatment. Um, they were supposed to refer me for aftercare. Um, I don't know why that never took place from my agents. Um, I didn't see it as a big need. Um, it was just recommended that I do um, enroll in aftercare. But at 40 years old, um, I actually, um, uh, since the TLP, the transitional, the Marshall House that I left, like it was probably the biggest turning point in my life. If you would have told me two weeks into the program that I would have been the one leaving there with a car, um, an apartment, a decent job, I'd have told you you were full of shit. Um, but there was a lot of things, well not really a lot of things, um, I guess the Thinking for Change program that they have there helped me a lot more than the like mental health dual diagnosis and the AODA did just because it gave you a better understanding of why you make some of the decisions you make. So actually for the first time in my life, uh, at 40 years old, I've uh, like acquired this stuff all on my own just by working and saving. Um, like I said, I just left the Marshall House on October 26th. I was there for four months. Um, I had already paid, um, I mean, I gave the landlord 990 bucks for a security deposit, $495 to hold it for this month. Um, I bought a car. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, now I'm just, I'm actually just trying to be a father. Like I didn't realize the severity of the offense when it happened. Now I, that I have another three and a five year old daughter that I've actually had the chance to be a father of, it kind of makes me, you know, kind of feel sick about myself that I made a decision to actually do this. Just, but. Okay. All right. Um, does anybody want to make a, a motion in regards to him? I'll make a motion to approve Mr. Heinrichs to 1904 Farland number two, address specific. Is there a second that? Okay. Let's go ahead and vote. So yes, what would be is to approve uh, Mr. Heinrichs to live at that address. A no vote is to uh, deny him living there. Gotta do it sometimes to get it double down a little bit. M motion to approve passes four to one. Okay, sir, you've been uh, approved to move to 1904 Farland Avenue, apartment number two. Do you want it sent there? Ah, uh, please. Okay. All right, see you later. Thank you very much, guys. Well, there's one person <laughs> left. I have the wrong number. Do it. Oh, I have the wrong number. Let's see here. Okay. Michael? Yeah. Okay. Just going to <laughs> I cannot get him. Mine continually goes up to um, Yeah, mine is the same, same as mine. Okay, he's yeah. just returning. Right, that's what I thought. This is the only thing I have. Just and mine went back to the name that was on here. Okay, I'll just read yeah, everybody. Really there we go. So back in uh, August of this year, um, we approved him to uh, go to 1192 Oregon Street for 30 days. Um, address specific. That failed. And then uh, uh, 90 days, for which time we uh, have proof of acceptance to transfer to Brown County probation and proof of employment is requested. So, um, so do you have a proof of employment? And who is this worth? With? Curdles and Construction on Oneida. Okay. Um, so you just started this job? Yeah. This Friday is the day of either. It's been a fourth week. Fourth week? Okay. And this is, so the time we, we met you back in August, This is, is this your first job since then? No, I've been working at the farm last time. That's right. Because I know we, you said you're going to move over, right? Yeah, I had to okay. get more to get different job. Okay. All right. And you did get transferred, right? Yeah. Okay. 
picture. Okay, I want to take a quick peek. All right, does anybody want to make a motion in regards yeah. to him? I make a motion to approve Mr. Wesolowski, <laughs> sorry if I didn't pronounce it correctly, to 1192 Oregon Street, address specific. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right, vote to a vote yes is to approve and living there at that address. No vote it is about to deny. I can't vote. <laughs> that person's yeah. name. Yeah. Uh, motion passes unanimously. Okay, we'll go ahead and send that to you, and good luck to you. Thanks. All right. Okay, so just need uh, um, our next meeting is December. For some reason, we're back here. Twelve. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, does anybody have anything else? No. Nothing. Okay. Need a motion to dismiss. I'll make that motion. I'll second. We're making a motion to to go home. <laughs> <laughs> If we all get this motion. <laughs> <laughs> if it's denied, there'll be a pro problem here. Yeah. I'd say, all right. Get to you vote yes to this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I want to stay here all night. There we go. Motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you. I'm Katie on my channel too. <laughs> okay, Katie. Um, I was here for um, Richard Thomas. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to get some of your names because I did have the tape rolling when he was talking here. Yeah, it was on the website with the names of the board members. Right, but I just wanted to make sure I had the faces with the names. <laughs> oh, sure. So. Dean. Um, Dean, you said? Yep. D E A N. Yep. And last name? Gerondale, G-E-R-O-N-D-A-L-E.